by special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. <laughs> With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail, Silver. Hooray! If you want to be a champion at anything, remember, others have done it in spite of obstacles. Take rodeo champion Bob Maynard. He did it the hard way. He proved champions are made, not born. Bob didn't even have the advantage of growing up on a western ranch. As a boy, he lived in Chicago. But Bob started riding when he was eight years old. At 14 in California, he became a stable hand. Today, Bob Maynard is one of the top money winners in rodeo competition. He sure is, Lone Ranger. And like many champions in all sports, Bob still chooses Wheaties for his favorite training dish. There's no question about it. Champions are made, not born. And there's no question why champions choose Wheaties for their training diet. They want that famous wheat energy. They get it with Wheaties because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, were traveling southward on the trail toward Rock City when the Indian pointed ahead and spoke. Look, Kimakabe. Horse without rider, grazing along trail, head. This rider may have had an accident. Come on, Silver. Come up, scout. Oh, 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 the hoof marks show that the horse came from town. We'll take him with us. Uh, I'll wait at the edge of Rock City while you go into town and hunt for the owner. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Come on, fella. With a stray horse in tow, the Lone Ranger and Toto soon topped a rise and saw a bedraggled figure walking slowly toward them along the trail. Feller walking this way. Maybe him looking for horse. Well, he seems tired. Uh, look, him stop. For the pans. You must think we're outlaws. Hold it, hold it, easy. Hold there, fella. Uh, I haven't anything of value. I don't even carry a gun. I'm worn out from walking, and... Hey, that's my horse. We found him grazing alongside the trail. Uh, we're not outlaws. No need to raise your hands. Thanks. For that mess... Oh, forget it. Uh, what happened? Did your horse throw you? No, uh, I was run out of town by a big, tough fellow named Slug or something rather. He and his friends threw me out of the cafe, chased my horse down the trail, and then forced me to follow on foot. Him maybe mean Slugger Hawkins. Fellow we hear about, Kinosati. Oh, yes. You're new to the West, aren't you? Uh, yes, uh, I am. I'm Drew Westcott from St. Louis. Glad to meet you, Drew. Why did Slugger Hawkins mistreat you? Well, uh, earlier today I was sitting in the Rock City Cafe, and a fellow Slugger and his two friends entered... They demanded free service and threatened to shoot up the place if they didn't get it. Well, what happened? Cafe owner gave in to him. Then they insisted the treats were in the house for everybody. When I refused to take anything, they threw me out and ran me out of town on foot. After, they'd sent my horse down the trail with an empty saddle. That was quite an experience, Drew. You're lucky.
lucky Slugger Hawkins didn't shoot you in the back as you ran from town. He has a very bad reputation. Isn't that right? Why don't you carry a gun? Frankly, I, I gave up carrying firearms. Well, in the West, it's necessary for self-protection. I have good reasons for not carrying one. Such as? For uh, one thing, I would have killed Slugger Hawkins. No need to go that far. But having a gun might have kept you from being mistreated today. Men like Slugger Hawkins respect a gun. And a quick draw would have resulted in his death. I don't understand. I don't think you do, but no matter. At least you have your horse back. Now, where will you go? I haven't decided yet, mister. Well, we're going to camp near here. If you care to join us, I'd like to talk to you some more. I could do with some advice, mister. Maybe you're the man who could give it to me. I'd like to go with you and the Indian. Good. Let's go. All right. Easy, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. After the three men had pitched camp in a nearby grove, Drew said very little. But later, when they sat near the campfire having coffee, he seemed to have gained enough confidence in his newly found friends to begin a conversation. I, uh, suppose you'll wonder about me being out here in the West and not carrying a gun. Yes, I have wondered, Drew. Well, in the first place, Dad was an expert with a gun. From the time I could hold one, he taught me all he could about firearms, which was considerable. Go on. Oh, we listen then. When Dad was younger, he came west. Became a frontier sheriff out here. Well, that's interesting. Later, he came east to visit and met Mom. After they married, she persuaded him to stay there. You see, Dad could outdraw and outshoot most anybody. But he had the habit of drawing and firing almost at the same time. He never gave anyone a chance. I'm beginning to understand now. Dad became sheriff in St. Louis. Once, he went after outlaws with a posse. His brother-in-law rode with him. Posse separated to widen the search. But what happened? Brother-in-law and a few others took a branch trail. Later, they found the outlaw's tracks. Dad's brother-in-law left the others and took a shortcut down a slope to find him. As he rode from behind some boulders ahead to intercept Dad, well, Dad fired before he realized who it was. That's bad. I know. He killed his own brother-in-law because of his bad habit. Well, that was a tragedy. Yes. Dad almost went crazy thinking about it. Mom died soon after, and then one morning, Dad went away. For good? Yes, he left a note saying he was heading west. He went on to write that since he'd never draw first again against anyone, he'd likely die with his boots on. He said, because he taught me to handle a gun, I'd learned the same bad habit he had. He begged me in the note never to carry a gun and to go farther east to relatives in New England where I'd have no need for a gun. Now we know why you not have guns. Uh, I haven't carried a gun since Dad left. But I I couldn't stand staying with Mom's relatives, so I came west to find Dad. Did you have any particular reason for coming to Rock City, Drew? Dad used to mention Rock City. I, I thought perhaps he settled in this vicinity. Since Slugger Hawkins and his partners moved into Rock City, there's been trouble. Everybody there is said to fear him. Todd and I came down here hoping we could do something about the situation. Isn't that right? Slugger, plenty mean fella. Can steal, kill. Uh, I can't match Hawkins physically. Much bigger and stronger than I. But I'm not afraid of him. I've decided you have courage, Drew. I'm very glad we met you. Isn't that right? Drew, uh, the people of Rock City need help. They're all under the thumb of Hawkins and his men. Uh, two weeks ago, the sheriff conveniently met with a so-called accident. Since then, there's been no law in Rock City. I noticed everyone seemed to give in to Hawkins. But there ought to be some way to relieve the situation. Would uh, you be willing to help? Yes. Good. I have a plan in mind, Drew. Meantime, in his hotel room, Slugger Hawkins was talking to his two friends. Well, boys, I've got everybody in this town eaten right out of my hand. <laughs> yeah, you sure have, Slugger. You practically own the town. Speaking of owning the town, I've been thinking of something. Yeah. Why? Well, listen, both of you. If I was to get myself legally elected as mayor of Rock City, I could appoint Chunky as sheriff and you, Trigger, as deputy. Hey. And we could really take this town for everything it's worth. Man alive, that is an idea, boss. You think you can get by with it, Slugger? Sure. You boys pass a word around town that there'll be a meeting of all the men of Rock City and the meeting house to nominate and elect someone for mayor. We'll hold the meeting tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. We'll start telling everybody right away. Yeah. 
But tell us, Slugger, how are you going to work it? Well, at the meeting, Chunky will nominate me. And you, Trigger, get up quick and second it uh-huh. and suggest that nominations be closed. And nobody will dare nominate anyone else. Uh-huh. After that, I'll call for a standing vote. Uh, that ought to bring every man to his feet. Yeah. yeah. No one would have the nerve to stay seated. You could bring the gang in to back us up if necessary. That's the way I figure it. Now pass the word about the meeting. Tell them we expect everybody to be there without fail. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. This is Mel Allen, sports announcer, coming at you again and hammering away with those five big words, champions are made, not born. Let me tell you about the kangaroo kid, Jim Pollard, of the world champion Minneapolis Lakers. Jumping Jim wasn't born to dunk those layups. He practiced hard when he was a youngster and just as hard today. And is it any surprise that Jim Pollard's been eating Wheaties since he was 11? Take another pro basketball champ, Bob Davies of the Rochester Royals. Ever watch Bob bring that ball down the floor? Well, he started working on that dribble way back in grammar school and eating Wheaties even then. It's more than practice, more than hard work, more than the will to win. It's also a matter of eating right. Sure, it's Wheaties I'm talking about. Wheaties, bowl after bowl. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Yes, sir, you bet your last bowl of Wheaties, champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. to continue. At their camp, the Lone Ranger and Toto had given Drew Westcott a gun and watched with interest as he demonstrated his marksmanship. They were both greatly impressed. That's good shooting, Drew. Ah. Thanks. But like Dad, I automatically squeeze the trigger when I draw. <laughs> Just can't seem to control it. I noticed that, Drew. And you hit the target without taking time to aim. Him fine shot. And he passed and drawn. But as Drew said, he needs control. If you're willing, Drew, I'll spend time with you and try to teach you how to gain control. I wish you would, sir. The following morning, while the Lone Ranger continued working with Drew, Toto rode to the blacksmith shop at the edge of town to have a loose shoe on scout face. Oh, scout. Oh, fellow. He's scout. The Indian waited while the blacksmith worked on the horse of a middle-aged stranger. Toto listened with interest to their conversation. You're new around here, aren't you, mister? Well, not exactly, though I haven't been here for some years. Looks like Rock City's grown a lot since then. Yeah, but it sure isn't getting any better as a place to live or do business. Yeah. The fact is, it's getting worse fast. Yeah. I can this shoe will fit all right now. Steady there. Easy now, boy. Be through here in a minute, Indian. Me wait. You know, I'm curious about what you just said. Why do you say Rock City is getting worse fast? Mister, one of you have ever heard of a hombre named Slugger Hawkins? Nope. Why? He runs Rock City now. In fact, he's called a meeting at 2 o'clock to get himself elected mayor. After that, anything can happen. Well, all the towns going to have to do is to run someone against him. Huh? Nobody in town's got the nerve, including me. He's got everybody under his thumb scared to make a move. Yeah. Well, I was aiming to stay here a day or two anyway. I'll stick around and see what goes on. Well, that's it, mister. One dollar. Yep, thanks. And here's the money. Well, I'll be seeing you, mister. Go on. Here. Shortly after, Tonto left the blacksmith's shop and rode through the main street of Rock City. He noticed the stranger's horse in front of the cafe. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. So he dismounted and went inside. He heard the newcomer talking to a group of men. Uh, you may not have had courage enough to run a man of your own choice from there. If you don't like the hombre you think is going to be nominated. You don't know Slugger Hawkins, stranger. We don't dare run anyone else. How come you let one hombre scare all of you into letting him take over Rock City? Well, he's a killer. And he's got tough friends, too. Get tough yourselves. And you might get good results at that meeting. Just uh, think it over. Well, I have to get a room at the hotel, but I'll uh, see you all later. (laughs) 
Shortly after, Chunky went to the hotel and entered the room where Slugger and Trigger were playing cards. Hey, I heard a stranger at the cafe shooting off his mouth a while ago. Told the men there they were fools to be scared of you. Said they ought to run someone against you. What? Where's that stranger now? In the hotel, down in room 203. That makes it easy. We'll get to him and shut him up front. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I found out something else, something important. What? I saw an Indian around town, dressed in buckskins and riding a fine paint. What about it? Remember the masked man who rode with an Indian over near Pecos? The armies who helped the law grab the Norton gang? You mean that's the Indian you saw? Yeah. Holy mackerel, Slugger, that means the masked man must be around here, too. Yeah. Come on. We'll get to that loud mouth stranger first, and we'll pick up the trail of that redskin. Why? We don't want to get mixed up with those two, hombres. We've got a couple of hours for the meeting. Maybe we can catch the masked man and Indian off guard and settle with them. <laughs> Later, the Lone Ranger was discussing the situation with Toto and Drew Westcott. The stranger you heard in the cafe, Toto, may at least start the townsman thinking. He'll be in plenty of trouble when Slugger Hawkins hears what he's been doing. We'll all ride to the grove on the edge of town. Toto will go into Rock City and check on things. Later, when the townsmen are gathered in the meeting house, we'll follow through with the plan I have in mind. <laughs> Horses give warning. And look cross gully behind us. Quick, move in among the trees. Ah. The three men ran in crouching position to the safety of the trees just as a shot rang out. That shot came behind the large boulders beyond the gully. We'll move closer. Keep behind the trees. Now. Well, one man get hit. They're leaving. Three of them. I'd like to have had a closer look at them. Ah, uh, and ride in direction of town. We'll pick up their trail. We're going to town anyway. Come on, we'll discuss my plan of what we'll do at the meeting while we ride. At two o'clock, the townsmen gathered at the meeting house in town according to the instructions given out by Slugger's two gunmen. Slugger Hawkins stood on the low platform before them. All right, quiet, everybody. Quiet! All of you know why we're here. It's about time we elected a mayor for Rock City. We'll have nominations from the floor. No need to give out ballots. We'll take a stand and vote. Now we'll get down to business. Let's have the nomination. I nominate Slugger Hawkins. I second that. Move that the nominations be closed. Who said that? I said it, Hawkins. You! I thought we ran you out of town. A chunky trigger. Throw this fool Easterner out. Cool his heels with a few bullets. Right. Stay away from me, you two, Hawkins. Oh, carrying a gun this time, huh? Well, draw your guns, men, and make sure this ordinary... Better look at is... the two windows behind you before any of you draw. Uh, look, Slugger, the masked man's at one window, the Indian at the other. They're covering us with guns, Slugger. Well, I'll settle with this young fool for bringing them. Oh, that... Oh, I'm hit! As Slugger Stop. dropped his gun and clutched his wounded oh. wrist, the Lone Ranger called through one of the windows. Oh. Have you all covered? Oh, Slugger, I noticed one of your men has an arm in a sling. You must have been the three men who tried to ambush us a while ago at our camp. We better gun the masked man and that Indian. Oh, wait. They're against Slugger. The masked man's wise, Trigger. Let's get away from here. Use your gun, Chunky. Right, I'll gun that young fool first. Stop that gun. After wounding Chunky, the Lone Ranger followed Toto through the windows, still keeping the crooks covered. I'll throw down my gun, mister. I'm already wounded. Toto, watch these three. Keep them covered while the election continues. Uh, Me watch them. Now, men, if you want to continue with this meeting and take this method of electing a mayor... Go ahead. But Slugger Hawkins is out of the running. That young fellow's the only one who got up nerve enough to face Hawkins. He's got plenty of spunk. He sure has. Yeah, he sure handles a gun. Yep. Let's elect him mayor. Yeah. What's his name? His name is Drew Westcott. I nominate Drew Westcott for mayor. I second the nomination. Let's make it unanimous. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Hold on, let me talk. Slugger Hawkins and his men tried and gagged me in my hotel room. Hey, what goes on? That mask, man. Dad! Drew, my boy. Oh, Dad, it's good to see you. Son, say, are you the hombre who faced Hawkins? Oh, with the backing of my two friends here, the masked man and the Indian, they taught me how to control my firing, Dad. <laughs> now I carry a gun. Hey, son, that's, that's wonderful. Well, Drew, you've been elected mayor of Rock City. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Well, uh, 
In that case, I appoint my dad as sheriff. Yes, yes, he's the stranger who talked against Tommy. Yeah, he'll be a good sheriff. Well, see, the first thing I'll do as sheriff is to put Hawkins and his gun slicks in jail for attempted murder. They planned to kill me. You said they tied and gagged you. Well, I made a big racket by kicking my feet against the door. The hotel clerk finally came up and untied me. I see. Men, I'll do my best as mayor. And I know Dad will make a fine sheriff. He'll see that law and order is kept here in life. Well, son, I'd like to meet the two friends you spoke about, the masked men and Indian. Eh? Here we are, they, they were here a minute ago. <laughs> they got other men to guard Hawkins and his pals, and they slipped out during the excitement. But you'll meet him sometime soon, Dan. Well, tell me who the masked man is, sir. Dan, he's about the finest man I ever met, and the best friend a fella could hope for. He's the Lone Ranger. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Dan Reed's Return. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Kids, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Cheerios, remember, is made from oats, yet needs no cooking. Eat Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Lone Ranger and Toto found that Dan Reed, the masked man's nephew, had grown into a tall, handsome youth when he returned from school to spend his summer vacation with them. When Dan wore a mask and was mistaken for the Lone Ranger by outlaws, complications followed, which caused the masked man and his companions to face death-dealing guns. Be sure to listen to this next thrill-packed Lone Ranger adventure! The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. <laughs> The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>